Okay, everybody, welcome to my first screencast, and tonight I'm going to be talking about uh, oh, wrong button uh, the the dark web or the arc the dark net, uh, which is uh, something that I get asked about pretty often, um, and I decided you know there's no better way to explain the dark web than than to actually show it to someone so I kind of feel like I'm in the movie The Matrix you know it's uh, when uh, Morpheus says you know no one ever can no one can be told what the Matrix is they have to be shown so um, <laughs> that's what we're doing tonight um, so this is my brief and I'll try to be brief about it um, introduction to what is the dark net or the dark web um, and it starts with what's known as onion routing, um, essentially. Um, and to understand what onion routing is, I've chased down a pretty good graphic that'll help explain this. Um, so, if I want to get a message from point A to point B, you know, from a source to a destination, and I want that message to to be to to be hidden along the way the best way to do it is to layer the 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 message uh, like an onion so it starts out here with my with the message and it's encapsulated right here in, in this router a and then it gets sent along to router b and then finally it gets sent along to router c this is all the same message and inside there is the message data and so router when it when it comes down to the, to its destination the destination only can see that it came from router C because it's been stripped away and router B um, only knows about router A and router C um, and so you you kind of have this message that is wrapped up in, into this onion <laughs> you know it's got many layers to it uh, and so that that's the way you want to conceal that's the way that they conceal source and destination um, so that's probably the best way to think about what, what the what the dark web is An, another way of looking at it is uh, as well is there's the regular internet that you go to that you can go to AOL and Google and you, you know you can um, go to Facebook and those are all on the regular internet that those names are served up by uh, the domain names are served up by uh, top level um, domain servers and the IP addresses are dished out from ICANN um, which is the uh, internet um, uh, naming and the internet um, IP address authority basically uh, where all the stuff gets doled out and builds out what's normally what we were commonly referred to as the World Wide Web or the Internet. Um, the dark web is different. The dark net is, it's an internet inside of the internet, if you will. And <laughs> I'm going to show it to you in just a minute, but I'm going to try to do my best to explain this so what they've built is this this network that is based upon a bunch of different protocols or a bunch of different um, uh, yeah I guess uh, protocols and n technology stacks that have been around so they use a bit of encryption and they use a bit of um, BitTorrent and um, y y a specialized web browser and proxy servers and, and all these different technical aspects behind it and, and I'm, I'm, I'm probably not I'm not going to be 100 percent accurate on this one I'm not an expert in it um, and two <laughs> I am trying to keep this simple so I don't want to get a whole bunch of comments of oh, well it's technically not true true it, it, most likely the things I say tonight are not going to be 100 percent accurate but they'll be close enough that 
you'll get an understanding, a better understanding. Somebody who's never seen the dark net uh, or who has never experienced it for themselves, you kind of have a little bit of a better understanding when you walk away from it. And that's my goal, not to make you an expert. <laughs> uh, because, again, I'm not even an expert myself when it comes to that kind of stuff. Um, uh, but back to the subject at hand. So the best way, I guess, now to, to proceed... Uh, well, before I do that, let's let's say why would somebody first of all want to use um, an internet inside of an internet? You know, why would they want to do that? Well, there's, a, 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 I think, a handful of really fantastic examples or, or reasons why you would want to do that. Um, and if you've been on my mailing list, uh, you you know, one of the things I'm really big about myself is free speech and I'm very very big about privacy rights um, and, and privacy uh, as just a, a general advocate and so when you're out on the regular internet uh, everything is is tracked and you know all your traffic is, it's it's sort of like walking out on a public street you know, everybody can see you, and everybody's looking at what you're doing. And if, especially if you if you've ever been in a big city and you've been up in a in a uh, a high rise building, or and you're looking out all those glass windows and you're seeing everything that's going on down below you, that's kind of what the what the regular internet is. It's it's a very public place, and um, <laughs> you know, everything is tracked and counted, and because of that, you know, things can be censored. Um, and they can be, uh, you know, uh, if, if you want to, you know, a, 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 a recent example is, um, Facebook and Google, um, and Apple and a few other companies, um, deciding that they don't want particular types of speech or particular types of opinions held on their internet. Now, they have every right to do that because as far as I'm concerned, um, that's private property and they have every right to do to to say what goes on in there. But if you come to a more less benign issue of say censorship at a government level where you're a reporter in the field and you're in a country like Iran, you know, or maybe in China where free speech is anything but <laughs> it just doesn't exist and you need to communicate with the rest of the world maybe the western world or the european well uh, it would still be western world um but, but you need to get to get information out um but you know you can't use traditional methods by email and via uh, social media because that country's isps can then lock a person out um and they can then fix in on what your location is and then show up you know guys with guns and they throw you in um, a jail cell and torture you and and eventually you disappear so that is the actual situation of, of why um, tour was created to begin with um, and I highly highly recommend to go into YouTube and um, look up the uh, the tour founders and look at some of the talks that they've done for DEFCON and things like that because they, they don't get too technical into it, but they do get into their reasonings behind it and their experiences. I think even one of them was a, a, was a reporter um, themselves uh, who did this inspired them to do that. Um, so that's a really good, good reason enough in and of itself to do something where not that is decentralized and no single government or single um, uh, you know entity of, of any sort can actually control the information that goes there and nobody can know what the source and destination is in theory I say theory <laughs> uh, because uh, well yeah I, I won't even go into that um, but let's just say for uh, that, um, for the sake of argument, that it does definitely work out of the box as um, concealing the source and the destination, uh, so to speak. So that would be uh, the reason why you use it. So let's get on with it. We'll go in. I'm going to show you my example. I'm going to show you um, 
what the uh, I'm going to actually connect to the uh, the, uh, the Tor project, and I'm going to use their browser to get on to uh, the darknet. So nothing fancy. I've already downloaded the client. I've installed it. Um, I go over here. I click on Start Tor Browser, and it'll take a little bit of time. There you go. Boom. Now the first time you get on there, it's going to ask you. Um, do you want to uh, configure this? Uh, you automatically configure this, and, and then it'll go out, do some things where it grabs the, the um, security certificates and uh, keys and things like that that it needs to secure it. So here we are, and we have or on the Tor browser. Uh, this is just the the starting address. Now you can get on the regular internet. So if I go to Google.com, bang, it'll bring it up. Just a second. There you go. I'm on Google, so I can get out on the regular internet. But if I want to, um, what but what you're connecting to is Tor. You're going to want to get to um, a Tor specific website. Now this is still on the regular internet. This is the uh, hidden wiki, and this is kind of like a small directory. Um, oh wow. we never allow access. So this is kind of like a small uh, directory of very popular sites on it. Now we're all familiar with uh, .com and .info and and um, you know .org domains, um, but on the on the dark web they end in .onion. So, for example, if I click on Torch here. You're going to see this really unique looking address right here. Now, again, you can't go out and get, you can't get vanity, you can do vanity names, but the names typically are, are generated um, through a computer algorithm and they're kind of random. You can, if you have enough computing power, you can actually do a vanity name, um, you know, up to a couple characters, but most of this has been taken up already, anyways. Um, <laughs> this is tr trying to reach uh, this uh, torch search engine the the one thing you'll notice about uh, if you get on the dark web is that a lot of the sites that are listed um, they don't exactly uh, stay up all the time so somebody could have a link in uh, to to a particular address and boom you know the next day it's gone because most people are just hosting them from their house or what or you know whatever uh, in this particular case this is kind of like a, a search engine and yeah see of course there we go so it takes a while to get on there because it's not like the regular internet where uh, it you go through uh, for, through different routers to go to it this is actually connecting to um, other people's computers that are connected to the Tor network to figure out how to get to uh, this this uh, this torch search engine here yeah okay um, I don't care about that for now um, but you know Silk Road and, and as you can see it, it, just as the reputation do, it proceeds it, 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 it on the dark web you can really literally buy anything from what I understand and um, you really have to be very careful um, because apparently there's some things on here that you know I don't even want to think about that I've heard stories about uh, of things that are for sale particularly sex trafficking and human trafficking and things like that nah, you know I, it's just not good stuff <laughs> just really bad stuff but this is essentially what it is this dot onion address is what um, what connects you to uh, to an actual website uh, that is being served up on the dark web so I want to show you what I'm talking about now it's grabbed this website it's pulled it down if I close the Tor browser I say close the tabs and I'm off of it and I just go over here to my regular old Firefox browser and I put in the .onion address it has no idea how to get to it it doesn't know how to resolve a .onion address so because my regular browser is connected to the regular internet so that in a nutshell is what 
the dark web is. Now, there are some um, some websites out there or some companies out there that are selling protecting uh, identity theft services that monitor the the dark web. Me personally, I think because I understand the way it works, it, I think it's really just a bunch of um, what I would like to say is uh, bovine fecal matter. <laughs> you know, um, I really think that uh, that the um, these companies they probably have people sitting there actively going to different sites that are known to be. Um, it's known to sell identity, you know, uh, um, fake identities or actual identities and credit card things, but it's not quite as um, proactive as they might make you, might lead you to believe. So, anyways, thank you for joining me on my first screencast, and uh, I'm, I know this was kind of, um, uh, you know, just spur of the moment, um, but you know i i hope that i've at least given you some idea of what the dark web is or the dark net and uh, you can take it from there and know a little bit better um about what people are talking about um thanks for watching